Okay, it is shortly after five, so I think we might as well get going. Um, yes, hello and welcome to this Wacom webinar on a Wednesday afternoon. Um, this is uh, another part of our Casa Wacom, Wacom at Home series of webinars that we've set up in this um, in these crazy times to reach out to you guys and offer some information and inspiration while most of us are sitting at home. So today's webinar is all going to be about manga and we've got a great speaker waiting for you. But before we go into um, the topic of today, I would like to point out some very easy to follow housekeeping rules, which will make it much easier for all of us to enjoy this webinar. So the webinar is going to be for around one hour um, with about 15 to 10 minutes uh, Q&A questions for you guys at the end of the webinar. As I briefly mentioned to you, for you who have logged in early, um, please use the Q&A function of Zoom for your questions. Um, do not use the chat, as this is very difficult for us to actually address your questions. And do not raise hands because it gets um, very, very busy and we will probably not be able to, um, to answer all your requests coming in via those two options. So again, use the Q&A function on Zoom and um, we will try to answer as many as questions as possible. Um, should that not be the case within the limited time of the webinar, we will send out an email with all the important stuff and additional information um, after the webinar in a couple of days time. Right. Um, so who are we and who do we have here today? So um, for those of you who don't know Wacom yet, we've been around for some 35 years. Um, we're focused on so-called digital pen technology. So <clears throat> we've been producing products that allow you to draw and create on a computer with the very easy and intuitive pen that you use from analog. Um, today on board, we have our partners and friends at Celsius. They've been founded in 1991, and um, they are one of the leading creative softwares out there, and especially for manga and comic creation. And I would like to introduce you to Joanna, who might want to say a couple of words to you about Celsius on this topic. Um, yeah, just for Clip Studio Paint itself, it's a software solution for drawing and painting, as you said, especially for comic and manga creation. Um, but it's also used in a variety of other fields and especially loved for its customizable brushes and workspaces. Uh, you can find our active community that provides tutorials and all kinds of useful materials for everyone to use. Um, and yeah, you can find more information on the website as stated on the screen. Thank you. Okay, and our presenter and artist of today is Lars Degenert, um, whom you probably know under his artist name, Lawan. He is uh, residing in Germany and maybe he also wants to say a quick hello. Hello everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Lars. And uh, I'm an illustrator, freelancer. I've been um, yeah, studying uh, art for a few years, but um, somehow slid into freelancing. <laughs> and um, yeah, mainly uh, my main focus uh, so far on, on my YouTube channel has been on watercolors. But um, since last year, I also um, had a deeper dive in, in digital art and also did some tutorials and I hope I can provide you with some more um, information in this tutorial or webinar. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be a very, very, very entertaining one hour uh, with lots and lots of creative and cool stuff to see. Um, you can follow all of us, Wacom Celsius and of course Laovan on the various social media channels. So do reach out to us and, and follow what we have to share there. Um, for this webinar, maybe some practical advice on top of the housekeeping rules. Um, in order for you to get the best experience, do play around with the, um, with the gallery view and the speaker view settings 
in Zoom interface. Um, so we have basically two screens that we're going to broadcast. One is the screen sharing, so you can um, directly see what Lavan is creating in Celsius. But we also have this over the shoulder view that you now see um, in the panel on the right, which might be a little bit small for you, especially if I am now speaking, then um, the, if you have the, the, the speaker view activated, then um, always the one who's actually speaking will be on top of your preview list. What you can do is um, go into the preview window of um, the over the shoulder camera and um, click on the three little dots in the right hand corner and click on pin video. So, and anyhow, if you've pinned the video on the right hand, uh, uh, on, on the right hand side, um, there's a slider between um, the, the shared screen and the pinned video. And with that slider, you can actually um, adjust the size of the two screens. Um, give it a little go, you can't break anything actually, um, and you will find uh, a good setting for you guys. So from now on, I think we're ready to go. Um, enjoy the show and we will see you back for the Q&A at the end of the webinar. Lauren, this okay. is yours now. <laughs> um, so hello again. Um, for this webinar, I prepared uh, a little line art sketch. Um, I used like a pencil sketch brush. So in order to talk a bit about um, painting and and how to um yeah work with with a line art like this and how to color it i um prepared some points actually just to <clears throat> give you an idea <laughs> and i hope uh yeah the the time is enough um but yeah let's let's get started so um imagine you have your line art done and uh we want to color it now so um, for that, we are going to need um, a base layer, so something where um, yeah we can work on that is more or less like a flat um, area of the figure. And I chose like this part to to go a bit deeper because I think it's uh, a nice image for digital drawing as a whole. Because with digital art, there is like a lot of different ways to do it. So um, keep that in mind, like what I'm going to show you is like not like a universal rule or something, but just a different way or another way to approach things. So to create a base layer, as I said, we have different options. So some like to use uh, the bucket tool, which would be option A. And um, the bucket tool, it has like a nice pro argument for itself, it's very quick. So you can just click on your, your areas and stuff like that. And yeah, it's basically then filled with color. But the problem is, as you can see, like, especially with a not so clean line art, it gets quite messy. So for this, <laughs> we might not choose this option, um, but we have a few more options that we can use. So maybe there's one, uh, that we will end up with. So another option would be to, to take a pen and more or less loosely, but just go um, the line, um, trace the line that we created earlier and basically create like a cleaner shape um, or the, the shape that's cleaner than our line art. And for that, we could then use um, the bucket tool, but uh, yeah, that's also <laughs> a bit work uh, um, extensive, uh, intensive, um, but the thing, the pro is that it's very exact. So with the pen, you could usually go in every little corner, um, but yeah, that's a lot of work. We don't have time for that today. So um, yeah. Another option that I usually use for digital painting um, is the lasso tool where you can um, push this little button here and then from that on out, you can just quickly create a selection of your work. Um, 
yeah, that's usually my go-to thing. But luckily <laughs> for this webinar, we have an easier option. I think you noticed by now, like digital art has a lot of different ways. Uh, we can use the magic wand. And since the sketch liner thing is maybe not as clean, but uh, it's enough as we can close the gap here. Uh, we can create an extension of the background. Just choose select here and invert the selected area. And then we can fill it with the white color. And there we have our base. So um, the thing is, why do we want to have a base? Essentially because we can just lock the layer. Um, uh, choose this uh, button right here. Um, Lars, sorry to interrupt you, but <laughs> yeah? we can only see the over the shoulder video view right now. So oh. can you check the full screen, the software share so that the audience or attendees can also see exactly what you're working on? Okay. Yeah, the, the screen thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> share screen again. All right. Was it all the the all time? <laughs> perfect. It works perfect okay. now. Thank you. Um, okay. So uh, now we have our base. And from that on, we have, again, multiple options. Um, but the, with the base, at least, uh, we can just lock the layer, push that button here. And that gives us, gives us the opportunity to, um, yeah, color it. So we can color it right away. Or, um, and that's, I think, a safer option, especially with manga work where you want to um, have like a few, a few options to change single colors and stuff like that. We will um, use clipping masks. So for that, we'll open a new layer. And essentially from that point, um, yeah, it's the same question again. Like now we want to, for example, um, select the hair. And um, I choose like a lasso tool for that again, um, because it has more that swing to it. Um, and yeah, with that, we would then select the hair layer. So I'm doing it a bit roughly because I have it prepared. But uh, yeah, I think, Maybe some of you agree that doing a base <laughs> layer, like it's the most annoying part, but it will in the end um, save us a lot of extra work, a lot of cleanup. So if you have a clean base, um, yeah, essentially we are good to go. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm quickly going to uh, finish this one here up. Um, yeah, just so you have a look <laughs> and how to get your base layers done. So the clipping mask is um, so that you won't overdraw the base layer that we carefully created. So yeah, this is <laughs> how we create a base. Um, and again, like this is really a bit work intensive, but it's also not really that complicated. You have some different options, some work better for the rest. Um, again, like the, the um, paint bucket tool is great when you have a clean line art, um, it's really quick, um, but also like to work with a pen in the bucket or with the magic wand or the lasso tool, different ways. And from that on, I, um, yeah, <laughs> created some some uh, single areas here and there, and um, we can work, just work with this from now on. Um, it's just done the same way as as I showed you. So, <laughs> painting the skin. I guess I guess we we start with the skin, as uh, skin is usually. Um, I don't know like how you feel, but for me watching or to paint skin usually is like something where you just feel like, okay, it comes to life quickly that way. So yeah, let's begin with the skin. 
So with the skin, we have, again, as it is digital art, a lot of different options. I mean, I think, um, as this is a manga drawing, we could start with more cell shading approach just for the start. But um, you can also go full on uh, rendered and realistic. But just for the sake of it, just give it a, <laughs> just let's start with a bit easier um, thing. So um, I create a new layer. So this is also more for a demonstration. Um, I create a new layer and do a selection from the skin layer. And now I have selected everything that is skin colored. And now on the new layer, I can add some shadow. And for that, I'm going to pick a darker color and yeah, to do some shading. Usually um, where you want to go with like a basic shading is um, all around the face. That makes it look a bit more, um, more rendered. Um, even though we are not doing much there. And then I like to do like a darker shadow underneath. And all right, the nose gets some shading. And I'm not sure like how you feel about it, but usually cell shading is like the easiest, but also it's not as impressive as it could be because cell shading usually looks a bit, um, yeah, boring. Uh, I mean, we could now that we have like, have it uh, now that we have it on a different layer here. Um, okay, I need to, oh no. <laughs> uh, okay, I can't access that. Ah, yes, okay, now. <laughs> Um, we have a tonal correction and we can now change the, the color of the shadows. Um, okay, you can see like where it did it touch up. Um, but yeah, that's usually like why you can or should work with um, another layer on top of your skin layer. But that's only like, that's something I would only advise if you work with a few layers. As this is a drawing with a lot of layers, let's go for more painterly style and therefore we just merge these two and work on one layer. Um, because we have, oh, I can get rid of the selection. Um, uh, because I locked the layer, as you can see here. Um, always make sure to do that uh, and, and switch that button on. Um, but yeah, when we uh, shade skin, usually, um, again, we can go from very, basic to very detailed. But as this is a manga drawing, it doesn't need to be as detailed as like, um, if you would want to draw a human face or more like semi-realistic semi style. Um, but you also maybe want to have it a bit more than just cell shading. So there are different ways of blending. And I'm going to show you like a few that I usually use. So we have like a shadow tone and the, the ordinary skin tone that we did with the cell shading method, which is just using plain shapes and colors um, as bold areas and then laid them down. Now I choose like uh, a brush that I downloaded from Clip Studio Assets. Um, yeah, you know, this one. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you, we are going, if we can link it later, but um, yeah. Just pick the brush you like. It doesn't in the end doesn't really matter, because there are a lot of different brush options that you can use. And um, what I'm going to do is use the um, pipette tool, the color picker tool, um, and just pick the color, and then slightly brush over the shadow tones. And also, like this is just. <laughs> vice versa, pick the darker color and pick the lighter color and create like a slight transition there. And you will quickly notice that that bit, little bit of texture that happens when you use like um, different 
um, colors and brushes and that you use to build up your face or your manga drawing. Um, that really makes a difference. It looks a lot more interesting because your eye, the eyes have something to rest. And we can even combine that with um, a plain airbrush. So airbrush, um, probably all of you know that, is just one of the simple tools like we had earlier, like, um, okay. We had earlier like a, a hard brush. <laughs> now we're going to use a soft brush. And um, this can also be great to just create a little bit of a gradient. And as this is digital, um, I know it's stating the obvious, but don't be afraid <laughs> to just work how you um, how you like. There's like very few, let's call it like um, rules, not really, but something you would have to keep in mind, which is um, like, for example, the uh, way that you stack your layers, because um, for example, like I <laughs> am just, made the effort to go with the lasso tool here and there. And if I just uh, would flip these layers, then you can see like, okay, like th these are maybe rules that you want to keep in mind or like something you want to keep attention, like where is your layer and stuff. Um, but with painting, actually, um, if you mess something up, there is no real way to mess it up. You can really experiment and if you think like, okay, maybe that shadow here, for example, can be a bit bigger, or maybe I want the shadow to be up above. Um, there's really no rule. Um, but what, what I can tell you is that textures usually make things look more interesting. So this painterly style, um, which again, is often just using the, the color picker tool and merging the colors into each other uh, really makes it look more interesting after all than, um, than just plain cell shading. And as we have done like a few shadows, we can also do some highlights. <laughs> Um, so I'm not sure if you if you noticed it, but um, like the the shadow tones are quite um, on the color side. If you look here on the color wheel, uh, it's reddish. But if we want to go a highlight uh, or pick a highlight, we want to probably go a bit more into the warmer region, warmer areas, and and pick a slightly more saturated, lighter. Um, more yellow, yellowish shade. <laughs> and um, when doing highlights, uh, I mean, you notice doing shadows can be very um, reduced, um, but with highlights, you usually also want to go and use them very um, as a highlight, as a literal highlight. So we can put one here. And you just notice probably that even though the, the tone, I mean, I wasn't really sure if it would work, but it does because like warm light gives you a colder shadow and that's what we did here. And um, then we could use like either uh, the airbrush to soften it out a bit. So we just don't have like a plain dot there. So we can use like an airbrush there or we can use a smudging tool, which you will find here on a, this thing. Um, I actually don't know why something here is German, something is English, but we I feel like something that just um, softens everything and then we have something that smudges things. All right, so we can do the highlight there or we could Okay. 
10 there were just, was a lot of steps we could also do it here like or here maybe just there's a few dots something like that um maybe even under the nose <laughs> it's, it's like a lot of the these things are up to your liking i like to put it on on the nose um just to do it very quickly again and um yeah, I think it, it gives it a nice little something that your eyes uh, are drawn to. And we won't, or we don't want to forget about subsurface scattering. So we give our highlights um, a bit more of a highlight, um, which is just a little more. Oh, we want to have it a bit darker. A really saturated um, stroke that kind of works like a transition between the highlight and the shadow tone. And this thing usually, uh, like, it's something <laughs> that, that occurs like in nature, like when uh, light comes on your skin um, or very, really hard light. Um, Usually it will, yeah, get, I think, reflected by the blood vessels and then appear more saturated. And yeah, just made, makes a fine line there. You're going to, to emulate that, like in a very more, or a very abstract sense, more or less. But um, yeah, it's something that I think looks really neat and that I've seen like a lot of artists, different artists use actually. And um, yeah, same you can also do here uh, above. And just notice like how I usually <laughs> like the color picking tool is my just my go to thing. Um, because they, again, like you can use the, um, the blending tools, the smudging tools. But I think um, they quickly go to making everything look very blurry and uh, with uh, a more painterly brush style uh, or painterly brush. You have like more, uh, you create more points that your eyes can rest on. Um, and so, yeah, after all, I really recommend it. I just demonstrate another uh, like. <laughs> a more obvious way how I use it. It's like creating different stripes, more or less, um, for <laughs> the shadow tones. So we're going to go a bit darker here, as well as here, and then slightly add another stripe here and there. And that's um, like, I think it comes really close to cell shading, but um, again, it has texture and that makes the manga drawing much more appealing or look more uh, elaborate if we have like certain areas that we actually yeah, focus around and that we give that extra attention. Um, so, just adding a little lighter color underneath the nostrils, just so they pop more. And yeah, okay. We can uh, go even more into detail with the skin, but because we are short of time, I want to also touch on the hair. Um, and with the hair, usually you have like uh, <laughs> gazillions different approaches to actually paint and uh, draw hair. Um, and that can be quite overwhelming, to be honest. So I figured for me, it works best to think of it in simple shapes. And um, by, by simple shapes, I mean <laughs> literally simple shapes. Um, just let me do uh where is it there yeah. layer 
to show you what I am talking about. So we have the head here and I like to think of it uh, as a circle. As a circle, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. so like this. And uh, when we have a circle, I want to make like a ball out of it. And for that, I would put some shadows on the outer corners and go lighter towards the middle. And depending on where the strongest light source is, um, you can go more up or you can go more down. Regardless, <laughs> we're going to use this model for our, oh, let's just, let's uh, stick it there. Uh, we will apply that to our hair for the first step. So I'm going to choose just with the ball, um, uh, a soft airbrush and pick a color. Um, I like to work with more muted tones because um, when you use like really screaming colors, uh, it can really overload your picture. So working with a few highlight saturated color tones like uh, the surface scattering where we use the vibrant orange uh, often is enough. So we have like here very muted tones and just like with the, with the ball, I'm going to apply them here to create a bit more like the illusion of that something is coming um, like closer to us. And this also <laughs> now is like the perfect base to um, get crazy. And by getting crazy, I mean um, painting and drawing details. We have imagined us like this is um, a giant sphere now and now we have to think of more like banana shapes that usually um, go with the hair flow and uh, just like a little something there um, usually um, when you do your sketch first it's like the easiest way to to what what really helps you with coloring hair is when your sketch really supports like um, a point where the hair grows out from like this would be the point so every stroke I do like it will always follow that flow it's harder with uh, characters like uh, Son Goku or, or Naruto where you don't really have like this focal point but uh, yeah that, that would be like probably a different story but for this demonstration I chose something where we have like some orientation um, and I really recommend to um, keep in mind like okay if you have like different or uh, multiple points where you can focus on doesn't matter at least you have some orientation and now what I'm going to do is like just spreading highlights and shadows and for that again like I'm trying to imagine more rougher shapes so I'm not going to paint each every single hair but I'm going to go for more um, yeah more banana-like or more organic shapes. It doesn't really uh, have to be like uh, always the same thing that would be boring and it looks more natural if we just go with it. And what I'm doing is basically just use the color picking tool, uh, get a shadow tone and then I'm going into the highlights and paint uh, some shadows there. Uh, and vice versa. So I can also use like a lighter color, go in there and create some highlights. And yeah, essentially, um, this is a step that uh, can also be applied with the clothes and with a lot of things actually, uh, where you just lay down like your highlight tone and then you go in with the color pick tool and the brush of your liking. And this way, yeah, we can shade. The downside of this technique um, is for now that we are only working with two colors. So um, in the process, you might want to switch things up. Uh, switch things up, yeah. Um, and go in with a different color and for that, as we have uh, 
seen earlier, like um, a more saturated orange might just do the trick. Going here, just trying to estimate, okay, how dark we are going to be. It's here and okay, it's a bit too much. But yeah, here we go. This way we can just, um, the, the shadows that we did, going to give it like, um, or more or less the highlight actually, and uh, we give, going to give it like an, a slightly more saturated glow, just as we did this with the highlight on the nose. And as we keep on working with the um, brush and with the color pick tool, we're going to blend everything together. Um, and if you notice like, okay, I want to probably go and have more contrast here. You can also just pick a slightly lighter color. I'm going to give it a bit more warm, warmth, maybe a bit more saturation. Okay, that's a bit. Hmm. Let's pick this one, I guess. And create even more shapes on top of <laughs> the shapes you already did. Um, this can like be um, more um, shapes that put emphasis on what you've already drawn, but you can also go really just any direction you want to. Um, I like to work a lot with like little triangles. Um, just to keep like, to, to add more detail, but again, not draw every single hair um, because that would be quite a lot of work. And with manga drawings, it's not even that necessary to be as exact. Um, because what, what you could do um, to, to give more the, uh, to give it more the illusion of hair um, if we, if like that's something where I would say like, okay, if this is <laughs> to, um, a bit like, if you struggle with this technique, um, there's an, in another way uh, that is a ritual with, with digital art where you can also use the, the lasso tool and actually layer hair that might give you like, um, a better understanding of, um, how your, um, hair is shaped. So um, if we are working here, for example, um, on the sketch, these glasses here, I put there not really just because they look cool, <laughs> but also because they give more of like a fall and background. So you have like in the background, um, like the, the back of the hair and in the uh, foreground, you have more like, um, a fringe pony or something like that, fringe bangs. <laughs> and um, so we can go there and just with the lasso tool, create shapes on top of it, um, which really is something um, that works with both. So if you are more of like a manga artist, they, um, this technique works well as well. If you are more of a, realistic artist or whatever actually. And now that we have that, you can go in there, put this layer on top of your line art because this is going to be in the more paint, painterly direction where we don't want to really have the line art underneath because the line art essentially works as like a guideline and something where you can yeah, keep orientated with. Um, but uh, yeah, for, for this one, <laughs> you want to be, uh, have it on top, um, which also like, again, this is, I, I chose a pencil sketch line because usually it makes you more willingly to go over it because it's, yeah, a bit annoying to work with a not that clean line art and then you are more out of your comfort zone. So I recommend switching up your line art uh, brushes every once in a while just to see if you, if what different results you actually achieve there. 
and yeah so now we have like our little um strand hair strand and we can work from there and that's something usually when i get questions like uh do you use a line art or do you just paint or how what what comes first uh it's yeah typically like stuff like this that i'm doing where i'm um yeah mixing things up over painting stuff and uh sticking only at certain areas to the line art um just checking if I didn't forget something. Uh, okay, yeah, great. So <laughs> I'm going to add some more details. And um, the thing is, when you work with the lasso tool, you might end up having a shape that you think could be a bit more dynamic. So we have here like something, maybe it looks a bit stiff. Um, Let's talk about some shortcuts <laughs> that I can recommend. Um, and Control T would be one of them. It's also like a buff here, but now, right now, I don't think I really can access it. Um, but if you go with um, Control T or Transform, it's a transform tool basically. Um, we can just adjust the shape of it, maybe, yeah, give it a different flow. Um, as you can see, like, looks a bit different here this looks a bit more spiky a bit more, more like a punk character um and yeah we can basically just adjust things with the transform tool and that's something that i really recommend to put somewhere if you have like um, a vacuum tablet where it has like buttons on the side um Control T is essential, just as um, the color picking tool, which uh, would be the shortcut Alt, um, and also like things um, that would adjust <laughs> your, your uh, transform tool. Like I think this is a Control, just um, pushing Control down, and uh, you can transform it more freely, um, or yeah, uh, just hold Shift, and it won't change like the, the, I don't know what to call it, but it will just stay the same. Um, all right. Uh, let's check, let's check. Okay, so <laughs> now we, we've talked a bit about the hair. Um, let's have a look at the eyes. Um, just also a tip that I don't really follow, <laughs> give your, your layers some names. Um, layer 10 is now my eye, eyes layer. Uh, yeah, that will help you a lot of, uh, or yeah, will, will help you a lot if you're working with a lot of layers, but I can't deny that I'm also like, uh, a bit lazy when it comes to labeling my layers. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's just the side. So when we um, come to color the eyes, usually like the same as uh, the same thing that applies with all the rest, you don't want to just go in and pick like a burning bright color. You can do that, but uh, it, it, I mean, it has an interesting effect, but it sometimes just looks a bit strange. Um, so you want to be or have worked with a more muted base, maybe like a slighter grayish blue. And from that on, we can just add like a little highlight. <laughs> this again, literally, that makes the eyes pop more. And usually I like to put like a little bright dot there, um, just as you can see, like when we zoom out, it already has like a bit of a glowing effect to it. And um, yeah, from that we go darker, but not more into the saturated one. So we're going to be more um, yeah, in, in, in this area here where we have like more grayish tones. 
um, and we can yeah switch things up. So as I went up with the highlight, I'm going to go a bit more into the colder area with the darker tone. It's a bit too dark. Um, and yeah, add some shadows here and there. And yeah, as I did the sketch, I, I like to think of the shape through because um, sometimes you have a cat eye character where you would put a little dot there. Um, but I also just like to have the shape already set. Um, but it doesn't actually mean that we just have to stick with it because we can just pick another darker color and put it right here. Okay, now here's the hair in front. Um, but yeah, so we have like a bit more of a cat eye expression, but it's really just up to taste. Um, another thing is we can also just use the highlight color if we want to have more details, put some dots here and there to create a bit of the transition look. And use even the darker color to go even wilder with it. And a lot of it comes really down to contrast. So darker colors and, and um, lighter colors or more saturated tones um, work just great. Um, together with <laughs> and less saturated tones, so it's a, a play. Um, all right, so just give it a quick um, highlight there to have it a bit more. Okay, I think I went a bit shoujo with it, so it's a bit more sparkly. Um, but yeah, that's I can do the eyes. Uh, of course, you can change that thing up with um, the tonal correction, uh, which is the function clip studio. And um, yeah, okay, I think we have, do you have like a minute left? Uh, let's see, what can we talk about? Ah, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Just a quick thing uh, that I really enjoy about uh, Clip Studio. So now that we have like, uh, let's pretend I, I got to the end and the character is colored. Um, and you want to have a background. Uh, Clip Studio has like uh, an asset section, which is like this panel right here. Um, there you find like the 3D figures um, that are great. Usually I don't really use them to directly create a manga character, but to, to um, look up if there are any mistakes that are made in regards of perspective. But they also have like um, backgrounds <laughs> that you can use, that you are free to use. And um, yeah. There you can like figure out a lot of things. You don't really have to use them. You can just overpaint them or what, whatever you want to do. But I figured that there is a lot of um, benefits to it to just quickly check if like a certain light situation makes sense. Here, for example, um, we have a lot of reddish, yellowish, um, orange tones. And I think they work great together with like the complementary color scheme, which is like here, the blue and the um, the greens. So yeah, the character stands a bit out a bit more. Um, but uh, yeah, there are also of course ways to um, quickly create your own background. Uh, I, oh. <laughs> I um, just make a little gradient here. And then you can work with, with brushes, essentially just, again, the Clip Studio Assets um, function where people from all over the world, they, they create brushes and, and, and assets and just anything you want to need or you can need. Um, yeah, they, you can just look up if you find something there. I just go here with, um, a little bamboo background. Uh, oh, excuse me. Mm. 
And I like to keep it monochromatic. So I'm going to lock these over paint them and add some details. So yeah, you can you can see like there there are a lot of creative ways to approach like backgrounds, but I don't think we have lots of time for that. So um, yeah, I think it's now time for the 10 minutes uh, for the Q&A. Am I right or wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yes, hi Lars, um, hi people in the interwebs, um, it's me again. So. First of all, a big, 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 big thank you for this webinar. Um, we saw a lot of questions coming in. Um, I think you sort of managed to either uh, see and sense the questions popping in and answer quite a lot of them already. Um, I have a little short list which might help to address some. And as we mentioned before, we will definitely reach out via email for um, all the other questions. So I, I saw one question that I quickly can answer, and yeah. it was about how to color line art. So what I would recommend, if you want to like have it very quickly, is take your your layer where you uh, your group layer where you have like the um, base colors there, uh, duplicate it, um, merge the selected area, and then you can group it, uh, clip it on your line art, and just. Uh, make that again. So um, there, and then you use the tonal correction, uh, which, okay, I need to now get there. But um, with levels, you can make it darker, and then you have like a color line art. Just really don't know how to get up here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> just like to multiply, and okay. They're a bit colored now. <laughs> but yeah, that's usually a quick way to do color line art. Okay. The other questions that we had was um, just the, your, your general um, layout setup for canvas size and resolution that you work in. I'm not sure if you addressed it. Um, no, I didn't. Uh, I usually work with um, DNA4 um, size. Um, because that's usually big enough to make like at least um, a little print out of it not really like a poster but a yeah, decent uh, postcard or like uh, yeah a4 print um so 300 dpe and um and a4 a4 <laughs> um but sometimes there are like occasions where you want to go bigger like uh, if you work for um towards a convention where you want to have like uh, giant posters or something like that then um, yeah, just go bigger. Like usually uh, also Clip Studio I think has like some presets um, where you can choose. And I usually take um, a four, A4, that's usually the, the size of this block here. Okay, cool, thanks very much. Um, there were a lot of questions about brushes. Would you have like from the top of your head, a list of your five favorite brushes that you use constantly or the five most important brushes that you would recommend to uh, to beginners, for example. I have um, I, I have some <laughs> brushes that I think are really uh, fascinating. Um, I used them once, I think, for my comic book, but just the effect is so cool, <laughs> which is just like a brush that that creates your hair, and uh, you can work off from that. Um, also like here, yeah, this one is for, for I, I really like, love these um, playful brushes where you have like different things. Um, but just for um, effects or what I really regularly use is um, a brush that has, I think a Chinese name, or it's called Dust and um, make it uh, on a light color. And then you can add some glitter effects there that's like, I think that's also a really good way to create like the illusion of a foreground and a background without much work in a way. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's this one. Um, it's from the, the asset uh, store or asset front um, there. Cool. 
So now you've shared this very easy to draw um, hairbrush, but how much time do you usually spend on on one of an, of, on your artwork in like the most important steps? Mm, so I think like uh, I mean the the hair actually like if it goes well like it's a lot of playful appro a lot of yeah play around mm. a playful approach. Um, where it can hit or miss very quickly. So sometimes you just go there and you're done in like a half an hour or something. Sometimes you just need more time to evaluate. Like, um, yeah, do I want to add more shadows to it? Do I want, what, what do I want essentially? And I think that's usually the, the, the um, part where most of my time is spent on like thinking about where do I want to go? Like the, um, the craft um, in the end is something you will get into it and you will get, become, uh, get quicker with it. Like, uh, as I showed in the beginning, if you do like a selection of, of the hair, um, like I think you can struggle with it or you can uh, <laughs> have it done very quickly. It depends in a, bit, uh, in a way. But uh, I think for me, uh, a lot of this more in the, in the conceptual thinking about uh, what am I drawing rather than how am I drawing. Right, and and for the entire piece, how much time do you usually um, need for it? Mm, so for this one, I would say probably uh, maybe six hours, maybe mm. seven hours. Depends on if I would um, work over like line art and stuff like that. Because uh, yeah, as you can see, like this this pencil thing. It, um, gets a bit in the way of the flat colors. So usually for some areas you would overpaint it and that can really take a lot of time. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it wouldn't be as long. So if I would have done like a clean line art, uh, it would have been, I think, uh, yeah, a different story. But also like it depends then on the look. Like uh, when I said you have different approaches, you want to figure out in the beginning where you want to go. Do you want to go in a more cell shading manga way? Do you want to go like a hybrid version of a uh, more realistic style like the Kimi Chandas? Or do you want to go full on into that rendering and uh, stuff like that? So, yeah. Because essentially like the skin was done very quickly. <laughs> but you can spend hours on, on that alone depending on where you want to go. Um, one last question. Do you have um, any specific uh, pen settings or shortcuts um, in the Wacom driver when you work? Mm, yeah, um, I have like, um, as I said, um, a transform tool, which is S -T -S uh, control uh, T, which is like for quickly moving things around. Um, Alt is always on the pen. Um, so I quickly can just pick colors on, and pick like half tones between those colors and go more into detail with certain shapes like, like this uh, thing here, for example, and then work more elaborate on that. And also like those modifier, like uh, just control for, for example, the, the um, transform tool to push it in different forms and directions. Um, and yeah, that's... I think maybe like a uh, yeah, right click, but I yeah. think it wouldn't work here, but yeah. Okay. Well, thanks very much. We are at the end of our time. As I mentioned, um, we will probably dig through a couple of more questions um, after the webinar and share as much information for, for the attendees. Uh, Lars, a big, 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 big thank you um, from all of us here. Thank you also um, for having me. <laughs> more than welcome. I already saw a couple of requests to have you on board more often. So let's, <laughs> let's take it from there. Um, before we go away, um, hang on. Yes. Let me quickly. This one. Um, show you, share some more details. So, um, Check out our website, as I mentioned, check out um, uh, our social media channels. You will probably see a couple of posts on this webinar in, in the next hours and days. 
Um, as I mentioned, we will share a lot of information afterwards via email. Um, should you be interested in purchasing any of our products, if you don't have one already, do check out, out our special offers that we're currently running on the e-store. Um, the promo code would be CASAVACOM and it allows you up to 10% discount on a lot of products. So it's definitely worth checking it out, should you be interested. Um, otherwise, that will be it from us for today. Again, a big, big thank you to Lars. A big thank you for all of you who attended this webinar. I think it was very enjoyable. Um, lots of questions, lots of comments. Um, and yes, we are looking forward to seeing you again soon in our webinar series. Thank you and bye-bye. See you soon. Goodbye.